great British explorer, George Mallory, was to die on Mount Everest, was asked why did he want to climb it. He said because it is there. You know, um, I mentioned it briefly in the video, but every time I start a speech, I feel I, I have to share with you that me being on this stage and me being a speaker was not Jen's grand five or ten year plan. People come up to me many, many times and, oh, Jen, how, how did you become a speaker? I, I want to be a speaker. How, how, did you do, how did you do it? What was your plan? What was the math behind it? And I'm just like, you were barking up the wrong tree because this was, not only was this not my plan, I didn't want to be a speaker. I went kicking and screaming into this, actually. I had been an acrobat and aerialist for, I don't know, four or five years, and I found my people. You know, I found my tribe. They are passionate people, weird just like me, wanting to lay on the floor and stretch and be upside down and hang 40 feet from the air. And I thought, oh, my gosh, this is this is my passion. This is my love. I, I toured with Britney Spears all around the world, 20,000 people sometimes just in the house with the energy. And I, I loved it so much. But ever since I was a kid, this tapping on my shoulder, hey, Jen, you should be a speaker, started with my mom. You're kind of motivational. Maybe you should be a speaker one day. And at this point, I was an athlete, and I was like, please, mom, ew, that's so boring. I mean, don't I have to be an old guy with a suit and tie and gray hair to be a speaker? I mean, this is what, that's all I saw growing up of what speakers were. And so I was super young. I wasn't a guy. I didn't have gray hair. <laughs> and so I just thought, no, nah, that's just boring and uninteresting, and, and it's going to take me away from the thing I love, the passion, the new people I just found. And it progressed as I got older. And then I was already an acrobat, already an aerialist, doing my thing, going around the world. And, and it kept coming up. Aren't you a speaker? Didn't even ask anymore. Oh, you speak, right? And I was so irritated. I thought, why is everyone trying to make me a speaker? And it just kept happening more and more. And then I got inundated, just flooded with job opportunities. And I could stop right there and say, oh, well, then I started speaking. I realized this is what I was supposed to do with my life, and everything was perfect. But that would be a lie. <laughs> because even the first two, two and a half years of speaking, I knew I was supposed to do it, but I had the wrong attitude. The very thing I thought was going to take away from my life, in fact, added to my life tremendously. And it was a big wake-up call. It was an ego check. Because I thought, well, I know. I love to control my life. Who else loves to control, right? Anyone love to control in here? You're all lying if you didn't raise your hands. <laughs> and so I just thought I knew what was best for me. How could speaking, I mean, speaking was my retirement plan when I was old. And yet it came 20 years earlier than I thought. And it was the best thing that could have ever happened to me. And it was such a like, wow, wake up, Jen. You don't know everything. You need to let go. Because when we're like this, we can't receive. Right? We can't receive things, even things that we think are so wrong for us. But I had to open up. I had to stop controlling. I had to open the fist. My strength can also work against me sometimes. <laughs> so it's taken me even more places around the world, met even more beautiful people, having more incredible experiences like this one. Never would have happened had I just said no, kept my fist closed, not been open and thought that I knew everything. And it certainly never has nor ever will be all about me. Nothing I've ever done. And my parents are truly the heroes of the story, of my life, of whatever you want to say. Parents, community, family, just like this, like Ted, like here, like, like Santa Barbara, this school. Community is so essential. And I am the product of what everything here and all of you represent. People pouring into me, speaking life into me. So we can speak death into people or we can speak life into people with our words and with our actions. And I, you know, people look at me sometimes like, how dare you with no legs think that you can just be an acrobat and an aerialist and power tumble and play softball and basketball and volleyball all against able-bodied athletes. What, what, how did you, how is that even possible in your brain? But when you're in an environment 
that says you're beautiful, you were born this way for a reason, you can do whatever you want, just figure it out, and you believe it. If you have no ceiling to stop believing, then you just keep believing. And that, even if that's not your past or your childhood, that's okay because you can be that to someone else. You can choose how you are stepping into the rest of your day. My parents, all that sports I told you I just did, again, stable-bodied athletes, no wheelchair, no prosthetics, that's awesome. But, but then I went to them and I also said, I want to go roller skating. All right, Jen, really, stop it. Could you not have just played piano? Wouldn't this be easier? I'm sure that thought had to cross their mind. It had to have crossed their mind. But all of these things that I wanted to do, they could have, my parents could have met me and answered it with negativity, which as a child or even as an adult would have 100% came across as discouragement. Could have completely crushed my dreams, stopped my dreams, and who knows where I would be. Who knows? But, and they had every reason, all the reasons in the world to say, ooh, roller skating? I mean, you're kind of tiny and maybe it's a little dangerous and, oh, by the way, you don't have legs, so where are you putting the roller skates? I mean, what, what is this, right? But to me, I mean, I didn't even think that that was, I couldn't even tell you this story because I wouldn't even thought this was a story because I was just going roller skating. How would you think about it? Would you go and tell a story about you putting on roller skates? No, because you think it's boring. That's how I thought of it. But in retrospect, now I look back and imagine if you were the person in the store selling me the roller skates. I come in like I'm owning the place. Ooh, I'm gonna try on roller skates and I'm gonna put them on my hands and I think they're super cute. Like what, what has she lost her mind? What is this chick gonna do with roller skates on her hands. But I was motivated to win that limbo and crush the limbo, all right, and slay that and beat everybody, okay? So this was my real motivation at like seven, eight years old. And that's what I did every single time with those roller skates on my hands in limbo in that situation. And, and just think about that. I mean, it's roller skating, it's the limbo, I was a kid, but that represents so much more so much more because maybe that hadn't happened. Also, my parents, maybe they said, eh, softball, volleyball, I mean, power tumbling, really? You're, no one else has ever done this. this. This isn't even possible. Nope, no. Play piano, do whatever, do something with your hands. How different would I be? And this is applicable to everyone, right? Because the one thing that every one of us in this room have in common is obstacles and struggles and our mountains and whatever you want to say. We're, we all have them, will have them, and we will continue to have them. No one gets a free pass in life from this. <laughs> so think about whenever a mountain or an obstacle comes in your life, you're going to have a million and one reasons to say why you can't do it, why it's impossible. Oh, this is too difficult. I mean, do you think my training and the way I went about learning all my sports was the same as everybody else? No, it wasn't. But I still got the job done, right? I still was able to do the things I wanted to do. So who cares how I did it? But it's a, a creativity thing or perseverance thing or just kind of a believing it thing, right? And so we all have that. When, when we have the obstacles and the mountains and the trials and all of this, and all your excuses and all your reasons why you can't and it's scary and all of this, you might have to do it a different way than the person to your left or to your right. You might have to go about that. You have to tackle that in a totally different way that maybe you can't even see right now or tomorrow or next month. That's okay. Because if you believe that you can do it, you're gonna do it. And if you want it bad enough, you will do it, period. End of story, that's it. You're gonna do it, you're gonna figure it out. You, how bad do you want it, right? That's what I, I always tell myself, I'm like, okay, Jen, how bad do you want it? Do you wanna be in shape? All right, go to bed early, drink a lot of water, eat clean, it's not rocket science. Just be consistent at it, right? And so this is the same thing, whatever your obstacle is, whether it's fitness, whether it's an academic thing, whether it's art, whether it's speaking. Number one public fear of everybody, right? And so 
push yourself, push yourself to do that. And like I said, our past, all of us have different pasts. All of us have different family life. I was adopted, left at the hospital, put up for adoption. Family was from Romania, not given a name. And people say, okay, you're left in the hospital, born without legs, given up for adoption, not given a name. Wow. I mean, your life, that's pretty rough. I'm like, okay, first of all, let's stop being so dramatic. It's not your life. <laughs> Chill out with the dramatics. And no, I, I don't hate my biological parents. And yes, I will forgive them, but honestly, I didn't feel like there was anything to forgive because I had my parents that raised me with everything I just told you. So how ungrateful would I be if I said, well, I'm gonna choose, I'm gonna choose to be hung up every single day on the fact that I was left and abandoned and all these dramatic words, then I don't deserve the life I had, period. I'm gonna hold myself accountable because we do have choices every day, right? Is choice, is it a choice, Jen, to be happy? Is happiness a choice? Yep, every single day, over and over, over and over, over and over. I don't wake up. I, you know what? To be honest, this morning, I woke up, and I was not in the right place. My, my, just, my attitude, nothing was right. And I had to get myself right this morning because this is not about me. I'm not here because it's all about me, myself, and I. That's not why I speak. That's not why I do any of this. And all of it is a choice. So it's a choice to live in anger. It's a choice to live in unforgiveness. It's a choice to live unhappy. And I think if we pay attention to the little choices that we think are insignificant, looking at somebody, smiling at somebody, listening to someone, or the opposite of all of that, not doing anything, not looking at someone, being shut off in my own little box, in my own little world, because it's all about me, myself, and I, you pay attention to those little, not so insignificant, kind of big choices every day, when you look at that in a month, two months, six months, a year, five years, those little choices now completely shape who you are. Your morals, your work ethic, your character, the essence, the core of who you are. So I think if we could pay attention daily and make little changes, little tweaks, we can be totally different people in such a positive way, whatever our goal is. And it's totally 100% doable and not accountable because we're just, or not scary because we're just taking it one day at a time. We're not looking into tomorrow. We're not looking into next week to not get overwhelmed. But we're taking ownership of our choices and recognizing that we are making the choices. It is on us. It's no one else's fault. It's us. No excuses, taking the ownership, and realizing that we can live in beauty, in love, in forgiveness, in acceptance, in just, just taking every day as a gift. And it's not easy, 100% not easy. But I think the more we can be vulnerable, real, open, just about who we are, good, bad, ugly, because we're all human, we all have struggles, we don't know what someone else is going through, but we know we're all going through something. But also recognizing that every single person in this room has gifts, talents, abilities, beautiful things that you are blessed and gifted with, that you love, that you are passionate about, that can change someone's life. That's not, oh, motivational, awesome speaker, Jen. That's something I've been around the world. I've been to 18 countries. I've seen beautiful people, and this is a common thread all around the world, you have it, you can change someone's life, but you have to believe it. So do you believe?